Hi, I'm Matthias Beck. I'm one of the authors of Computing to Continuous Discreetly. And in this video, we'll continue chapter 13. We'll prove a reciprocity theorem for solid angles. Let me remind you that we're measuring the solid angle at some point x with respect to the polyhedron P as the ratio of the volume of a ball with small radius centered at x, rather the part of this ball that intersects p divided by the volume of the ball. In the previous video we also introduced the analog of the integer point transform for this solid angle measure, namely this is this function we call alpha sub p, we're summing over all lattice points in p a Laurent monomial, z to the m, that encodes this lattice point, and we're weighing this monomial by the solid angle at m. And we proved this theorem 13.5 that you see on this page. This is the solid angle analog of Stanley reciprocity, and it tells you what happens when we plug in 1 over z into the rational function representing alpha. The first thing I want to do today is prove an analog of Brion's theorem. I'm reminding you here of its statement. This was theorem 11.7. And it says that the integer point transform of a polytope equals the sum of the rational function representing the integer point transforms of the vertex cones. And what we'll have is precisely the analogous theorem for alpha. So again, I claim for cones, alpha of a cone is a rational function. And so now when we add up these rational functions over all vertex cones of a polytope, we get the, uh, the solid angle generating function of the polytope. Let me give you an idea how to prove this theorem. I will eventually use Brion's theorem for integer point transform but the starting point is to write the solid angle generating function as a sum of the solid angle function over faces. And to make the sum work, I will go over the interior of each face. But now on the interior of each face, the solid angle is constant. It's what we call omega of the face. And so now the generating functions I still need are the integer point transforms of the interiors. And so this is where we use Brion's theorem now. It turns out one needs to first take out the sum of all vertices here. Let me do that. But then on the remaining faces, so this is now a sum over all faces other than vertices. On those remaining faces, I will use now the classic Brion theorem. So what does that mean? I still have my solid angle of the face. And now I will write this integer point transform of the interior of the face as a sum over all vertices We never discussed this in this video, but you can realize there's sort of a version of Brion's theorem for open polytopes and it is what you imagine So what we're going to do now is we will sum the rational functions representing the integer point transforms of the open vertex cones. And I have to be a little careful with my notation because, of course, these vertex cones depend on the face. So let me write this as kv of f. And so now to finish this proof, what you want to do is you want to basically uh, switch summation over here. I claim there's sort of a way of rewriting this where my outer sum is over the vertex cones of the original polytope. It's easiest to do that when your polytope is a simplex 
But just like with the classical Brillouin theorem, we can restrict ourselves to this case because for general polytopes, we can triangulate and then add up vertex cones of this triangulation. So there's a lot of details that I'm not giving over here, but I claim with this setup, theorem 13.6 will follow. You can read the details in chapter 13. I will need this version of Lyon for solid angles to prove the reciprocity theorem for the solid angle quasi-polynomials. So this is my main goal of this video. Let me remind you that we had this sort of fundamental angle measuring counting function that we called A sub P. So this is the sum of all integer lattice points in the teeth dilate of a polytope rational polytope and was summing the solid angle of each lattice point. In the previous video we proved that this is a quasi-polynomial in T and so just like with the Erhard MacDonald reciprocity theorem we now have a reciprocity theorem for this quasi-polynomial but unlike Erhard MacDonald you can see there is sort of the same function on both sides of the equation. In the world of reciprocity theorems, we call this self-reciprocity. And really, the nice way of phrasing this is that if you think of A sub P as a function, what this is saying is that this function is, is either even or odd. I want you to appreciate this because this is a fairly strong result. It means, for example, if P is an integer polytope, then of course, A sub P is a polynomial, and what we're saying now is this polynomial misses every other term. If you think back on our discussions of computational complexity of Erhard polynomials, what this is saying is that the solid angle polynomials are, in some sense, easier to compute them. I only need half as much information in a given dimension compared to computing Erhard polynomials. I want to show you how one proves this theorem 13.7, in part because it's a really beautiful theorem, but also in part because I want to show you sort of an alternative way of proving these kinds of reciprocity theorems when one has a Briand type theorem. At the end of chapter 11, we discussed in a video how Erhard's theorem follows from Briand's theorem. And the idea that we used in this sort of alternative proof is now the starting point of what I want to do for solid angles. So my first remark is that the function that we're interested in is, of course, a special evaluation of our generating function. So we'll take the generating function of the solid angles with respect to t times p and plugging in the uh, all ones vector as variables. And if you think back now what we did at the end of chapter 11, we at this point used Briand's theorem And thought of this generating function as a sum of rational functions coming from the vertex cones, but we couldn't plug in 1, 1, 1 right away. Uh, we had to take the limit as uh, the z vector goes to the all ones vector. But okay, so here's uh, Briand's theorem. So we have now the solid angle generating functions over all the vertex cones and of course, we have to dilate those vertex cones. Again, back in chapter 11, we now use the fact that dilating a cone 
is just translating. And so if you look back at what we did back there, we wrote this dilated vertex cone as we need to dilate the uh, vertex itself. And then we had sort of a, a cone that back then we called K wiggle sub V. And the effect this has on the level of generating function is that we can write this as z to the tv times the solid angle function of this cone k wiggle. And of course, the nice thing about this representation is that this rational function over here does not depend on t. And in fact, if you think about this, Again, in the light of what we did back in chapter 11, this expression that we wrote down here gives another proof that a sub p is a quasi-polynomial in T, going along the same lines of what we did back then for Erhard quasi-polynomials. But this is not what I wanted to show you. I wanted to show you what happens now when I plug in negative t into my quasi-polynomial. One has to treat this with a little bit of care, but because the right-hand side, so that this limit over these Laurent monomials times rational functions, and then I'm summing over all vertices, this is a solid enough formula, pun fully intended, that I can do algebraic manipulation such as plugging in negative t. One has to be a little careful arguing this, but essentially what happens, and this is really where theorem 13.6 that we just had on the previous slide comes in, you can realize, and again the details are in chapter 13, that this here becomes a limit of the uh, solid angle generating function at 1 over z. But as z goes to 1, I don't care if I'm plugging in z or 1 over z, this will be my solid angle quasi-polynomial. Let me finish this video with a generating function version of the reciprocity theorem that we just proved. So let's define the generating function of this quasi-polynomial a sub p as solid sub p. Then I claim, number one, this is a rational function. This is not a big deal. So I'm giving you the version here where we have an integral polytope. We know the generating function of a polynomial will be a rational function of the form that you see here in theorem 13.12. This fact just follows from McDonald's theorem that a sub p is a polynomial. But now the self-reciprocity of a sub p, I claim is equivalent to a self-reciprocity for these rational generating functions, namely when you plug in 1 over z into the rational function up to a sign you get the rational function itself back. Now, this should remind you of something. Namely, at the end of chapter 4, we discussed Gorenstein polytopes and then reflexive polytopes, where we had a similar reciprocity theorem. Now, back then, this followed from Erhard MacDonald reciprocity and the fact that Gorenstein polytope are very, very special. On the other hand, for solid angles, we have really nothing to assume other than we have an integral polytope and there's a version of this for rational polytopes. And we get this self-reciprocity or equivalent, just like for reflexive polytopes, we have this sort of palindromic numerator polynomial in our rational generating function.